Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. Is Capital One the credit card company to beat in many consumers' eyes? It seems like it might be, and I will tell you what I mean by that. But first, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already. And if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So there was a survey done earlier this year by the big customer satisfaction company, J.D. Power. The results came out in like June or early July. But the survey itself was conducted in January and February. And they asked people who took the survey to talk about the credit cards that they had gotten in the last 12 months. So from early 2020 to early 2021, which you might think of as mostly being the COVID era right there. And they asked, why did you get a credit card? What were you looking for? Who did you get your credit card from? All of those kinds of things. And there are a number of interesting things that came out in this survey, but there was one in particular that I really wanted to zero in on in this video. J.D. Power asked people who had gotten a credit card in that last year period whether they went in thinking they were going to get a card from one particular company and if so, how much comparison shopping they did against other banks and who they chose as sort of those potential competitors to the other banks to you know, look at their credit cards and do a little bit of comparison shopping. Well, for the most part, they didn't do a ton of comparison shopping. On average, it was 1.5 other banks. So one or two other banks people would look at to see what their credit cards were in relation to the company that they had originally come in and thought they were gonna get a card from. So if they thought they were gonna get a card from American Express, they looked at one, other two, one or two other banks as well. And almost across the board, what I found so interesting was whether it was American Express or Chase or Discover or Wells Fargo or Citibank, that competition company, the first one that they thought of as the place to go comparison shop against was Capital One. And so for these consumers, the first bank that came into their mind as the competitor to check out whether that was going up against American Express or Chase or Discover or Citi or whoever was Capital One. So all of these companies essentially needed to beat out Capital One in order to get that consumer as their customer going forward or to get a new card in that consumer's hands, which I found super interesting because we don't necessarily think of Capital One as the company that is the biggest competitor of Chase or the biggest competitor of American Express, we think oftentimes of Chase and American Express kind of going against each other. But these people, when they thought they were going to get a card from one of them, they went to Capital One to compare what Capital One was offering. And it looks like in about 20 to 25 percent of the cases, depending on which original bank we are talking about, Capital One ended up winning out and getting that credit card customers. So pretty interesting. Now, while it is interesting that Capital One is sort of the number one alternative across the board with all of the major credit card companies with these consumers, it also shows that in 75 to 80 percent of the cases, those people went in thinking they were going to get a card from one particular company and they stuck with it. So they might have used Capital One as sort of the alternative to take a look at, but they mostly stuck with the company that they thought. Now, in many cases, it might be that they had a specific card that they knew they wanted to get. And so they just, you know, looked at Capital One just to make sure they weren't missing something and didn't really go much further than that. But I think in a lot of ways, it shows the haphazard way that so many people get their credit cards. They see an offer and it's better than what they have, or they get a second card from the same company that they got their first card if it's a little better than the first one they had. And they don't really look all that hard at the rest of the credit card market. They just kind of take what's better than what they already had. And Capital One seems like they obviously have done a very good job on the brand awareness front because people obviously have it at top of mind regardless of what company we're talking about from American Express to Chase to Wells Fargo to Discover. Capital One is who they're thinking of. So that what's in your wallet, you know, Jennifer Garner or Samuel L. Jackson or whoever it is saying those words obviously sticks in people's heads and that is the company they look at as the alternative. But Capital One, while it has some good cards, is not necessarily the best company out there across the board, especially for people that have high credit scores. There are many other good cards out there and a lot of people are just missing out on them because they're only going to go so far in looking at who the competitors are. And if Capital One is number one in their mind, that's who they're gonna look at. 
Now, if you've been listening to me prattle on, you've probably been thinking to yourself, well, who was the number one alternative to Capital One? If someone went in thinking they were going to get a Capital One card, who did they look at as the competitor to do some comparison shopping? And the answer is Chase. So I thought all of that was pretty interesting because that's not how I tend to look for credit cards. I'm really looking at individual credit card offers and I think of all the big banks as kind of the same. So I'm gonna look across the board and do a little more comparison shopping and really be paying attention. But I'm a little different. I have a whole YouTube channel talking about credit card offers. So anyway, other things that were part of this survey, other questions also were interesting. And one of them was, why did you get a new credit card? What was it that you were after when you did it? And the top three answers were, number one, a bonus offer up front. For most people, that bonus offer meant a cash back bonus offer or a points or miles bonus offer. For some people, that meant a 0% offer with the new credit card. Number two reason, to build credit, which I found pretty interesting. Now, obviously, we talk about building credit a lot on this site, but it shows you how many people are going out there specifically to try to build their credit. I don't know if COVID had anything to do with that, if people were, you know, sort of worried about their financial picture and wanted to sort of work on that during the COVID era or what was going on there. But anyway, that was number two. And the number three was to try to improve the everyday rewards on the cards they had. Another interesting finding was that of the new credit cards that people got in that year, 11% of them were travel rewards credit cards. Now, 11% doesn't necessarily seem like a huge number when you look at it against all the credit cards that obviously were obtained, but that is the same number as the prior year. So during COVID, when you would think people would have been shying away from travel rewards credit cards, just as many people were getting them. So people were either making a bet that COVID wasn't gonna last very long, or maybe some of those great bonus offers that were being offered during COVID to try and get people to continue getting credit cards when maybe the credit card companies were afraid they weren't going to get new cards, maybe that motivated them because the travel credit card industry basically stayed the same during COVID, just as many people getting travel cards. I actually made a video last year talking about the fact that so many people were stockpiling points, getting these credit cards for these big bonuses at a time when they really couldn't travel and wondering whether there was either going to be a devaluation of some of those points and miles or whether it was going to be more difficult to actually use those once travel was happening again because so many people were going to want them at the same time. I haven't really heard much data about that yet, but I have to imagine over the next six months or so, we're going to get some surveys or we're going to get some statistics that are going to tell us whether it was more difficult to get an award seat or a hotel night or whatever now versus the past. I think maybe the biggest takeaway from this whole survey for me is it shows how random people's choices often are in terms of the credit cards they choose. Sometimes when there are way better cards out there on the market, people are just gonna go with whatever company they're already familiar with or they're going to do very little comparison shopping. There could be better things out there. And maybe this is why we see card companies put new cards on the market that really aren't very good, aren't really very competitive because they know X number of people are going to go after their cards anyway. I look at Bank of America, they're the number two credit card company. I would not say they are the number two credit card company in terms of quality of the cards they offer, but they have enough customers out there, enough people that are gonna keep coming back to them over and over again, that obviously they don't feel like they have to be number one in terms of what their offerings are. They know there's gonna be a certain laziness factor, a certain you know not doing comparison shopping, and they're still gonna get those customers. So what this also means for those of us who spend more time doing our research, the credit card companies can handle a certain amount of us who get credit cards and pretty much are unprofitable because they know with the bigger numbers out there they are going to have profitability so if they're giving five percent in you know one category they know a lot of people are going to get that card and they're going to do all the one percent shopping as well because they're not going to hold multiple cards or they're not going to figure out how to get you know three percent in a different category or whatever so if you're someone willing to put the work in i think that this survey sort of shows you that you 
you are one of the few. And as long as not too many people catch on, the credit card companies aren't going to totally clamp down because they know the numbers are on their side. That is it. If you have any comments, I would love to hear them in that comment section below. Otherwise, I thank you for watching. And as always, please go to, what's it called? Proud Money, where we do credit card reviews and we talk personal finance and we talk deals and all sorts of other fun stuff too. Thank you for watching. Bye.